Hi, my name is Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. Well, today I'm going to be making this high-powered 10-watt LED task lamp uh, that also has these little practical third arm attachments here for my electronics area. Uh, now, this bulb is really bright and it gets really hot, so there are a couple of issues involved in working with it, which I'm going to be addressing in this video. Uh, so let's get building. So starting out, I had a two inch thick piece of walnut to work with. And in order to carve it out on both the top and the bottom side, I decided to use the X-Carp, which is a CNC machine. First, I created a file in easel and started carving out a quarter inch indention on top. This is for where the aluminum will later fit. The walnut here measures five by seven by two inches. Once that was done, I flipped the piece over and designed another section on the X-Carp. This is for housing some electronics for the light, so I had the machine carve this out as well. All the easel files will be linked below in the description. So here you can see the top and the bottom carved out. For the inset I'm working with a thick quarter inch piece of aluminum and I'm using a really fine bit to carve out the area I need cut, where the holes need to go. Also, I couldn't help but engraving out a Darwin Orver section here too, because it just looks so awesome. Now, while you could carve all the way through, I decided to just scratch the piece to show the areas that needed to be cut and drilled, because it's a lot faster. So here I'm cutting the outline with the bandsaw, and I'm gradually coming up to the line here. And then I did a fair amount of sanding on the belt sander to smooth the edges checking if it fits, and it needed just a touch more sanding before fitting perfectly. Next, I proceeded to drill out the holes in the corners. So I started with a small drill bit, then got a slightly bigger one, and an even bigger one, and so on, until I reached the half inch that I needed. I debated for a while how to design the arms. Finally, I settled on using small pieces of aluminum rods connected with screws through holes and then tightened with wing nuts. I'm using hollow aluminum as well as 3 8 inch aluminum that fits into the hollow one. To create this, I first need to cut up a whole bunch to size and I'm doing this on the bandsaw. And then I need to drill holes in them. It really helps to have the pieces secured in a metal vise here. I also need to drill holes down the solid aluminum for the ends here, and I'm using the drill press for that. So for the light, I'm going to be using a super bright 10 watt LED. I'm going to attach it to a piece of aluminum. 10 watt LEDs require 30 volts, so I'm going to need a booster to up the voltage. To hold the light, I have a square piece of aluminum cut out here. I also have one of the solid rod pieces here and I cut a groove using the bandsaw and then I'm fitting the square piece into the groove. To secure it in place I have a screw through with a nut on the other side. Now on the side of the unit I need a hole for the power cord and I also want a switch to turn the light on and off. So I'm drawing out the size of the switch and I already have a hole drilled in that area. Now all that I have to do is chisel out the area for the switch to fit in perfectly. And uh, that fits nicely. To connect the arms together I'm putting a machine screw through the holes I drilled and then securing that with nylon washers in between. To tighten everything I'm using wing nuts and that way I can adjust whatever angle I need. Then I have some alligator clips that I can fit in the holes drilled in the top aluminum pieces here. Now time to attach everything together. So I'm mixing up some epoxy and I'm fitting the alligator clips in the rods. And I'm also gluing the aluminum to the walnut. Then I'm epoxying in the hollow aluminum into the corners. And I have cut the one on the far left a little shorter, that's for the light. So just carefully gluing them all in. So to connect everything, first I'm tinning a wire with some solder. 
I'm using a continuity tester to see where to solder the power to on the switch. And then attaching the wire to the switch and soldering it in place. Now there's a hole drilled through the section where the light will go, so I'm feeding some wires through that. And then I'm connecting them to the booster, which will fit into this carved out area. Then I'm attaching the switch through the hole here with some hot glue. I have a power cord here attached to the booster, so that is going into the second hole I have prepared here. And then gluing the booster down. Now all the electronics are in place. To get the whole unit off the ground, I'm cutting off some pieces of rubber here to make little feet and hot gluing those on as well. So the wires are coming up through one of the hollow tubes, so I'm just going to test the light here. And it works. Okay, so here we have the pieces, the walnut and the aluminum, arms on the left and the light on the right. Let's work on the light. The 10 watt LED gets pretty hot, so I decided to attach some heat sinks on the back side. I did numerous tests to determine how many heat sinks I needed, and I even anticipated using a small fan, which I didn't end up needing. To attach the heat sinks to the aluminum, I'm using thermal adhesive. I'm putting on a light coat on each heat sink, and then it should be clamped, so I'm carefully putting on this piece of Osage orange because it's pretty heavy. I let that dry for about an hour, and then I turned it around and glued on the LED light to the other side. So here you can see I have the wires going up through the light part here, through holes I've drilled. And I chose to leave the wires exposed because I thought it looked pretty cool. Then I'm sanding the edges to create a light chamfer and then I'm finishing the walnut with some of my tongue oil wax polish. And it really brings out the color. It looks great. Now for the underside, all the electronics are exposed, so I want to add some protection, yet have plenty of airflow. So I picked up some fine wire mesh at the craft store. So cutting to size and then just attaching with a couple of small screws. And that looks good. Then finally I'm soldering the light on. Let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, and you can move the arms around, move the light around, place it wherever you need. And of course this is really nice to have when you want to hold something in place for soldering or whatever. Okay, so it's all ready and it just turned out so cool. I mean, I love the, the walnut and then the aluminum. It's a really nice contrast and just that it's really kind of thick. Uh, but of course, what is really cool here is the light. I mean, this is a thousand lumens and it's so tiny, yet it provides so much light. So it was really awesome to be able to use that in here. I've been thinking lately about where I can integrate these really, these really bright lights because I think they are so cool. Uh, but of course you do have to up the voltage to be able to use it and you have to make sure you distribute the heat because this gets quite hot. Uh, but I have been keeping this on and you know I can touch this and move it around and it's not too hot and you know I've made sure that it doesn't get hotter and hotter or anything like that and it stays, it stays nice and cool, it's at a good stage right here with these uh, heat sinks. So that works really well. Um, another thing that's really cool is that I can take these off these third hands uh, and I can kind of add to them whatever I want. I can make them longer, you know, I could put a magnifying glass on one, uh, whatever I need to. So that is pretty cool. So yeah, really, really love the way it came out. Um, my name is Lynn, and this is the Darwin Orbit channel. Don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here because I put out project videos every week. Uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.